Hallelujah. We are going to speak up under this topic. You are the light of the world. What does this really mean? That you are the light of the world. Hallelujah. The life of a believer, one, is a visible one. Every believer lives a life that can be seen by every body. And it is highly impossible to try and hide who you are. In exposing what Jesus meant, we will put more of our focuses only on two aspects, especially on where we have just read. Not to say that this is the only thing that Jesus, when he was preaching, especially from chapter 5 to chapter 7, he only meant on these two. But I want to ask to focus only on two because I feel they are important for you and me today in our daily lives. I want us to go and look at when he says, you are the light, you must also shine. We will look, we will put more of our focus on relationships. And the second one, we will also look at the reputations. These are two important things that people in their lives they really take care of or they really love to express themselves in these two aspects. When you read chapter 5 from verse 1 to 2, the scripture gives us or makes this thing more easier because it tells us when Jesus, when he was talking, whom was he talking to? The Bible tells us that when he saw the crowd in verse 1, chapter 5, he says he now went up to the mountain and his own believe, uh, disciples followed him to the mountain. And then when they were on the mountain, they sat down. Jesus started to teach. So we are aware when the sermon, when Jesus was talking or when Jesus was preaching, he was preaching to his own disciples. But we, we cannot rule out because on the mount, it was not only the disciples and Jesus. Even other people were there. When Jesus always was speaking, masses were drawn to him to come and listen. But his message was intended to his disciples. And this is what I want to do today. The message I have is intended to you believers in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The other thing in the whole pericope where Jesus was preaching from chapter 5 to chapter 7, he uses these words addressing them. He says, your father, and in other instances he says, our father. To show that Jesus together with these people he's talking to, they have something in common. They share a father. And this is the same thing that I think I have in common with this church. We share the same father. It's your father. It's my father. Is our father. And this is the target of the people of the assembly. I'm not saying if you are in, in our midst, this message is not for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you do not call God the father, this message is not for you. No, 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 no. There were people who were there. And there were people who were listening. And let me tell you something. Always when Christ speaks, he speaks to people differently. Hallelujah. And even those who does not know him, they are affected by the words that Jesus speaks. You are in the right place. You did not make a mistake by coming here. From verse 3 of the same chapter where, where we... we, we we have read, but we read 14. Jesus started by saying something on eight statement of facts when he was talking to his disciples. He started by saying, blessed are those, blessed are those, blessed are those. Telling them the statement of facts. 
And this eight statement, he was giving to his own disciples who are always with him. Giving them an assurance after they followed him. Not before they could follow him. Because when people are in sorrows, when people are in need, most of the people use their situation as if this situation is something that will draw them to God. Your situation is good that you have a situation. That situation is not a way that will take you to God. Hallelujah. But that's not where I want to dwell. In verse 13 of the same chapter, Jesus used another metaphor when he was addressing his disciples. He says something that you are the salt of the world. But if salt loses its taste, you shall, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. Jesus is talking to his own people who are always with him, who are always listening to him, who sees whatever he's doing. But he gives them something, a parable, to compare what they live, they live now, and they compare it with the importance of what the salt can do. We know what salt we use it for. When we have salt, people who, who, who work in, in butcheries and all these other places, they will tell you that if they want to you know, preserve meat, if there's no fridge and other things, they will put salt on the meat and then they can hang it anywhere. That meat will be preserved. So Jesus was telling his own disciples to say, listen, let me compare you with what salt can do. He says, I want you to understand that you, being my believers, you, being the disciples, you are also the salt. And not just the salt of this world. But that's not where I want to dwell. We are going to verse 14, 15 and 16. I want us just to go through it together. He says, you are the light of the world. Not just the light. This light, it's supposed to give the sunshine, not only to Pulukwani, not only into your own house, not only into your community. Jesus tells them, and these people were seated or located in a certain location, but he tells them that your, your, the purpose of of them being saved, Jesus makes them to be more bigger than they think they are. He says, you are the light, not of this place only, but the whole world will be given the sunshine by you. And this is the message I'm bringing to this church. The people's church, you are not just the light in this house. You are not just the light around this place where we are. We are the light of the whole world. He also says something that a city said on a hill cannot be hidden. When a city is up, when nothing hinder it, when people are driving from all over the world or all the four corners of the world, when they come in, they will be able to see that city. That is the position of Christianity. That is the position of you and me. And we did not place ourselves there. Jesus himself, he says, you are the city that is up there. And that city that is there will never, or it's impossible that it will hide itself. Because it's right up on the hill. Verse 15. He says, Neither or not at all do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. That's that one, I mean, that, that makes no sense. It's not something that is normal. You can't take a lamp. We take this lamp. 
we hide it on our side. What is the purpose of the lamp? It's to be up so that it gives what? The light. And when it goes further, it said, but on a stand, here they are. And it gives light to all in the house. That's why we are able to see one another. Because the light is up. And the light is able to do what? To give everybody the light. And that's what Jesus says. You are. This makes sense, brothers, and this is normal. Hallelujah. But in verse 15, he says something here. He says, in comparison, or in the same way, let your light shine before others. From the world to others. This is what Jesus is saying. He gives the reason. He says, so that they may see your good works. The, the issue of us being the light or shining the light, we do this so that others can see in your life the good works that God has done in your life. That is the main important thing about Christianity. Brothers, we are not saved for anything. We are not saved to come and sit in church. We are not saved. If we were saved just to go to heaven, God will save you and immediately you will leave. But God has saved you. That's what I said. Uh, 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 that spoke about this. He spoke about the prayer in chapter 17. Jesus said, I am praying for them. Not that you take them out of the world. Let them stay there because they have a duty to do. What is your duty and my duty to do? Is to make sure the good works that God has done in our lives must be seen by others. If your works are not seen by others, what is the purpose of you being here? You are going to be like a salt that is good for nothing. Why are you here? Why are you saved? Listen, maybe in your own family you are at hand, but the Lord chose you alone. Why did he choose you? Why are you hiding under the basket? Why are not your works seen by your own family in the house? Because you are the light, not of yourself, but of others. Others need to see, and they are not actually seeing you, because that's where we are going. The Bible says when you take it further, He says they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Let me just pause a little bit there. God has put you as his agent of good works. I, I don't know if we understand that. God has put you in this place as his witness to witness him to other people who does not know him. Listen, when Christ died on the cross. He did his work. The Bible says immediately after that, he went, he sat down. He is relaxed because he understands, I have done my part and I left this part for them whom I'm saving. You are not saved just to be there, to be known, for your name to be big. The way we do today, it's like we own this salvation. It's like it was a must that we have it. It was like it was designed specially for you. It is not like that, brothers and sisters. That's why we are saved by grace and grace alone. It's not your works. It's not how much you know. It's not how much you have. It's about God and God alone. That is the reason why you and me must give him what? The glory through the works that we do when we live on our daily basis. You know, this text is so easy that it helps us to understand what Christ really means. Listen, when he say they may see, the question is, who are they? Others, the world. Maybe in this context, this may mean people around you. It may mean your own family. It may mean your own partner. We have people whom their partners are not saved. And let me be honest. 
is through your good works that your partner will know Christ. Sometimes we want people to know Christ. We want people to come to Christ who is so loving, who is so caring. But we ourselves, who call ourselves Christians, we are not caring. We don't love our own partners. We don't show love to them. Yeah? We beat them on a daily basis. But we call them, let's go to this God who saved me. Sometimes they ask themselves questions. What kind of God is this one? Who said he has changed this man, but the, the reality is this man is still the same. Or maybe he has worsened since he went to that place. Your siblings, your parents, even your own in-laws, that's where things become more tougher. People don't get along with their in-laws because they think this thing is about themselves, their ego. It's about what they have done. It's about their reputation. Listen, it's not about you. It's about you shining God's words so that others, when they see, they'll be able to say to God, thank you. Thank you. That's, the, that's, the, that's our position as the church. That's our position as the children of God. I don't know what about your own colleagues, your friends, the community members? These are part of the people you must find yourself around. People around your circle. You know, we have groups that we, we go to. We have, we have societies. Eh? We, have, we have clubs. Do they really know that we are the light? When the light is off, this is very important. When the light is off, people may not be able to see. Take like ESCOM. We have an ESCOM today. ESCOM. Once the light goes off, when I'm seated in the house, my kids will be busy with Wi-Fi, with this, with all these other things. But once the, life, the, the light goes off, everything stands still. Eh? Everything. They will come and sit with me now. They have a moment with me now. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, God is saying something very important to us. To say, listen, make sure that there is light. Make sure that there is light. There are people who depend on you. There are people in your family, they depend on you. Not for finance, but how you treat your wife. Yeah? Not for anything else, how you walk before them. Not for anything else. How you cheat your, 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 your maid in the house. How do you cheat them? There are people who depend on you because you are the light. And let me tell you, you must, you must, you must shine God's works. Not just work, God's works so that your own maid can be able to testify about you. And say, surely this is a person who saved this is a believer. We sometimes want to go around, talk much. No, 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 no. That moment has come to an end. We have to live more. We can just walk around here. When people meet you, there are men and women who admire you. There are those young people, when they look at you, they admire you. They, they can speak anything about you. They are there and they are waiting for you to give more of the light. Never allow the light to go down. When the light goes off, like how ESCOM does, most people get disappointed. Most people get disappointed. Their life stops. They can't see anything. Because the real light is no longer bringing the light is supposed to bring. Let me... Let me also say this. Believers have no visible mark. As we are seated here, do you see any light on my face? Do you see any light next to your person that we are seated to? There's no mark that, ha, ah, this one is, is born again. Don't go close to that one, it's not born again. How are we known through the works we do? We trust your confession when you say, I have you know, confess the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I am born again. Immediately, we come closer to you. But listen, it doesn't end there. We want to see the change. 
Are you really changed? Can we see the fruits of the Spirit? He spoke about them. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. We want to see the love, patience. We want to see these things happening in your life. Hallelujah. You are expected to shine that light so that your good works can be seen. Your conduct, your day-to-day -day life, how you, you live with other people is expected to shine God's light into this people's life. And the, when, when, when it ends, it says, so that people will give glory to your Father who is in heaven. This glory doesn't have to come to me. I deserve nothing. You the same. You deserve nothing. You deserve nothing. It's God who deserves it because he's the one who's doing the real work. You are not doing anything. You are only reflecting his hand in your life. And that's what he's doing. So brothers and sisters, if we call God our father, we should not try and hide because it's going to be impossible that we we hide. Even though we can hide, let me tell you something. In one way or the other, you are still going to shine the light. Wherever you are hiding, I may not, I'm not having enough time. I want to tell you a story where I, I, I you know, before I could take this, the, the calling of of, of, of being a preacher and minister to God and minister to his people, I used to try and run to places where I think people, when they look at me, they see me as a normal person. One day I, I sat in a place, way back, I ran away from my house, sat down, people were drinking, I asked for my glass, they gave it to me, I had a, a double thought, it was okay. This woman from Cape Town, she came and sat close to me. She said things that made me to understand that when you are a child of God, you will never hide. She says to me, brother, something is wrong with you. And I said, what's wrong with me? She says, even when you talk, your voice, your tone tells me that you are not supposed to be in this place. She does not know my name. She does not know me. I've never said anything to her. Brothers, we cannot hide. Even though when you try to propose something, they will tell you exactly, but, but when you are like them. You remember the story of this man when he was with Jesus. He was trying to say, I don't know him, but even though you say you don't know him, but your words reflect him. Hallelujah. I'm trying to, to hold myself so that I don't go out of what I've prepared here. And the Lord help us. As Christians, we confess, and that is often easier to say, that you can just proclaim and say, yes, you are the light of the world, but it's not easy to really shine that light in this world. That's where I'm going. Because it is very, very dark and hostile towards Christians. I'm talking about this world. This world is very, very dark, brothers. And very hostile towards everyone. And the thing that we know, the world hates Christianity. Everywhere. All the government institutions, wherever you go, everything that people are trying to do is to stop Christianity from moving. But Jesus says, no matter what they do, we are still the light. And you must shine before all of them. As I'm saying, it is easy to say it, or to say, or it's not easy to, to shine in the world that is hostile to Christianity. And that is what we are experiencing. So Christ talks about us hiding. The truth is we hide because we are faced with a hostile world. But there is something we should note. As I have said that Christ is here speaking figuratively. So he is not talking about you literally 
hiding under the basket because it is impossible to hide. Whether you are shining the light of Christ or not, it is impossible to hide. The question then should be, what light are you shining wherever you are? Because you will always shine that light. Immediately when we leave this building, when you walk, you are also shining that light. When you are ever in the restaurant, wherever you are, shining that light. Hallelujah. You will always be visible to everyone. You will not be hidden under the basket. It is impossible. What light are we shining? Because you are visible. Something very interesting in, is that Christ declares as the light of the world. And we must also know that he himself declared himself as the light of the world. John 8 verse 12, it reads, Again Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of the world. He repeats this in chapter 9, 4 to 5 of John. We must work the work of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming where no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As those are the words spoken by Jesus Christ. What is Jesus trying to say in this statement? Whoever follows will not walk in darkness. When Jesus went to, to call all the disciples, he didn't do much. He said, you follow me. And I think that is the same thing when he came to us. He asked us to do what? Follow him. We are following Christ. Brothers, we are here to follow Christ. Hallelujah. We are here to follow his ways. We are here to take his instructions. If the moment we try to bypass or try to do something else, we are no longer following Christ. If we do something outside the Bible that the Bible doesn't say about, we are no longer following Christ. The question is, whom are we following then? Because the disciples followed Christ. The believers are supposed to follow Christ. How will you, you, you shine your good works if you are not following Christ? Which works are you going to, to, to display to people? We have, to, we have to follow Christ and do what? Display the good works in our lives. If we do not follow Christ, whose works are we displaying? Then we are displaying somebody's works. Sometimes we try and display our own works. And when we display our own works, it's us who receives the glory. God does not receive the glory. And that is not the intention. God needs you. So that when people have said whatever they've said, he's the only one who receives the glory. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Whatever you eat, whatever you do, in everything you do, let God alone receive what? The glory. I just want to do something and then we, 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 we conclude. I want to speak about this light and understand it. What did he really mean on the light? The sun shines to whoever follows, follows him. And they are affected by the light of the sun. And they will never walk in darkness. According to verse 16 of chapter 5 when we read on, on Matthew, the Bible says, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see the good works and give God the glory. In the same way, brothers, let us, you and me, when we follow Christ, let us do what? Go after what Christ has done. That's what the, the, the sun is supposed to do. The, 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 the light is supposed to do. The sun, let us give an example about the sun that we are in here. In the evening, because I tried to check this and try to get so that my mind could be able to picture this thing. Now during the day, every body where we are gets the light. But when the evening comes, and something that I, I checked about the sun, I tried to look at the sun, I could not be able to see the sun. But in the evening, I was able to see the, the moon. I can see the moon without struggles. But the sun is difficult. 
But the moon, when I was trying to check, the moon in the evening gives us the light down here. When I was trying to check also, the moon does not produce the light. The moon reflects the light from the sun. And that light comes down to us. That's who you are. We are the moon, brothers and sisters. We must reflect the sun in everything we do. Let's go to our relationships as I'm about to close. Because I said there are two things which are very important. In your relationship, the question is, I know relationships are very hostile things, very difficult things to manage. You can, you can bear with me. Any relationship, and I can give an example now. Just this year, just Google and check how many people are divorcing. Because they're struggling. Not only people, go to the church and see how many people are even hesitant to get married because of what they see. Relationships are very tough. But they are tough because people don't want to do it to reflect the light of Christ in their marriages, in their relationships. They try and work out their own works inside the relationship. It's a difficult one. You cannot make it by your own. That's why even salvation is not your works. If you want to succeed in this Christianity, make sure you always reflect Christ. You always. In your own life, in the relationship with people you are with, your own children, people at work, everybody around, reflect what Christ. You will succeed. He has walked this way. He has prepared everything. He did this thing before you were born. He did this thing before you were saved. He knows this way. There is nothing that is hidden before Christ. How you relate with everybody. I mentioned many. Listen, don't try and work your own things. Reflect Christ. When you deal with Mama Zala, reflect your Christ. When you deal with you people at work, reflect Christ. I'm not sure if people at work can say the same testimony we know about you in church. I'm not sure if your own children can say the same thing about you when you are standing in front preaching. Maybe even your own wife sometimes is even amazed. What kind of God is this one who uses this man? Brothers and sisters, let's share his light. Not our own. Always when we try and share our own, we will always fail. I don't want to go through those relationships in the Bible. But when you go on, after uh, in chapter 5 and 6, you will catch them where he speaks to them. Another one, let me just point to one that he spoke about the prayer. The prayer that we know. He says, Forgive our trespasses as we do. We merely forgive others, or we are trying to play a game with God for God to forgive us while we are not forgiving other people. That's how relation God wants us to do unto others. It's relationships. My time is after me. I want to close. Hallelujah. In reputations, there is something about reputations that got my attention. People love to guard their own names. People love to guard how they are known. But when we're in Christianity, it's not about your name. It's not about how much you are known. It's about reflecting his. People must know Christ through you. People must know how good Christ is in your life. Sometimes even when we, we give our offerings, then this one I, I hope I want to read it so that it can help us in giving. Matthew chapter 6 verse 2. When you give to the needy, sound no trumpet, trumpet before you. As the hypocrites do in the synagogue, in the streets, that they may be praised by others. This is not what we are supposed to be doing. When we pray, the same. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. This is not you and me. When we do things, that God can receive the glory. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 7, 21 to 23. 
says something very important. It says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And cast out demons in your name? And do many, many works in your name? Because people think it's in gifts that they may be able to please God. Anybody has gift, brothers and sisters. People can try and do their gifts. Mara, to do the good works, it's a very difficult one. It, it's God in your life. In conclusion, Matthew chapter 7, 15 to 20. Beware of, fall, of, of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are rebels, wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. That you will recognize them by their fruits. When the light is shining, the question is, what kind of a light are you shining? Are you shining the light of Christ or of your own? My prayer for you is that you shine Christ's light so that the people will see the good works and give the glory to God. On the same chapter from verse 24 to 27, he says something very, very important. And I quote, Everyone who then hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat on the house, but it did not fall. Because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, the floods came, the wind blew, and beat against the house, and it fell.